broken in the northeastern corner of South Africa and you were watching the sun slowly making its way up the eastern horizon in the greater Kruger National Park live. The birds are calling gently you can hear a grey-headed sparrow chip, chip, chip. a crested Franklin And some guinea fowl. And this is a perfect, perfect late summer's African morning. You just see the last star of the morning. My name is James Hendry and you are on a live safari as I said. Good morning to you and you are most welcome. It's great to have you with us. Please do talk to us during the course of our three hour sojourn in the wilderness today. Hashtag safari live if you're tweeting like the little grey headed sparrow behind us. Or questions at wildearth.tv if you want to talk to us on the email. Also you can talk to us on YouTube on the YouTube chat stream. On camera today, all six foot four of the thumb. Well, the thumb, of course, isn't six foot four. The thumb is attached to six feet four of Brian Joubert. Well done, Brian. Very nice design this morning. Thank you. And on the other vehicle is Scott Dyson, and he is being filmed by the diminutive but highly skilled Wilm Durenbrach in the final control, Kirsten directing. And on the keys, I think it is Louise. I think that's the case. Now, we have had some wonderful updates during the course of the night. We had leopards calling, and that was Zumi, cat, Kevin, Catfish, and Adam. You were told us that a male leopard came to drink at the pan, and then later we had an update from Star that the lions were calling. Now, we heard them calling, and Scott is basically directly behind us, calling there, uh, listening out for the lions. I'm just going to call him on the radio. Apparently, he wishes to speak with me. Go ahead, Scott. I will let you hear what he says. Uh, James, tracks of one male heading east along Balanates uh, at the four ways. OK, copy, thanks, Scotty. We will head down Twin Dams and then back that way. Copy, perfect. Uh, I'm going to just check carefully the four ways, but I... Uh, Wonderful to hear that you like to sketch uh, the animals, or I guess the scenes, whilst watching. And what a great way to keep busy while on safari. And I wonder what he's heard. I wonder what's got him up and listening. Looks like he's having a bit of a sneeze. And this, to me, looks like could possibly be Scrapper. It does look a bit like him. So a different male to yesterday, hey, VM? Yep. Ooh, look at that scar below his eye. They have been in some battles, these boys. Now, we hadn't seen a big male since the 24th of December until yesterday. And even that male seemed not in the best condition. Look at the massive gash below this guy's eye. And there's... A coalition of five male lions, and it looks like he's one of them. I'm not sure. I'm having doubts as to whether or not this is an individual that's been called Scrapper by some, Tokolosh by the other, by others. But his eyes, his eyes don't appear wild enough <laughs> for it to be him. Sure, look at all the scratches and scars. It's not easy being a male lion. But at least this individual is very well fed. Who could you be? If we're very, very lucky, we may get to hear him vocalise again. They will usually 
be most vocal when it's dark, but in the kind of first hour of sunlight and the last hour of sunlight every day, you can sometimes get lucky, even sometimes early in, or late on into the morning or early on into the evening. But as a general rule, they will be most vocal at dusk, dawn, and in the darkness between. And it was his calls that helped us bring him into the, uh, bring us into this area this morning. We were sitting at the DRC, our camp, and Nikki, VM, and myself all heard the lions, lion calling. Together, we all stopped, cupped our hands around our, behind our ears to try and increase the size of our satellite dishes, and we were all in the general consensus that the call came from this general area. So there's three sets of ears that helped pinpoint where he was, and then his footprints helped us with the rest. I think you can maybe hear the lions calling now. I oh, know he said the wildebeest. The wildebeest has come for a closer inspection. You can see it up there in the top right. Now, it's possible that the wildebeest has not seen the lion yet, but he simply smelt it. That's a high possibility. Imagine we saw this lion catch the wildebeest. Anything is possible, but because the lion is so full-bellied, he's not going to be as motivated to pursue the wildebeest as if he was hungry. Ah, Eddie Abbey, you've mentioned that if this big male lion is full, there could be a carcass nearby. Yes, that is certainly possible, but in this morning's scenario, I think he has finished off whatever he's fed on and moved into this area before we found him sleeping. I don't think he would have strayed far away from the kill and even just the the distance that we've been following his tracks would indicate that he's just a little bit too far away. Or would have moved too far for a kill to still be us. So I think he's finished whatever he did feed on. That would be wonderful to know. Did he make a kill last night? Did he steal something from a leopard? What exactly did he catch and feed on? He may not necessarily have caught anything last night. He may have been full-bellied from yesterday morning. And still retaining signs of that full belly, that's certainly a possibility. <laughs> Hello, Lucy in Indiana. You'd like to know if this lion has got a lady friend nearby. And it doesn't appear that at the moment anyone is around other than the wildebeest that is snorting and an impala that's also keeping an eye on the situation. So he was doing a solo adventure, it appears, last night. His tracks also indicate the same thing. It was only one set of tracks. At one moment, I thought there could have been two sets of tracks moving down the road, but that was a false alarm. Now, I'm hearing Impala's alarm calling. And something's making me think that there's another predator here. Let's take a, a, a quick drive around. I don't think this lion's going to go anywhere. There's an Impala alarm just up ahead of us here. Um, let me take another route so I don't want to disturb the lion. But where these impala alarm calling, it just doesn't add up that they could be alarming up the lion. So, who knows, maybe there's a big male leopard that some of you saw at the Juma waterhole, or heard rather. Maybe he's moving through this bush up ahead. Hard to be certain what's going on. Don't go anywhere, lion. We are coming back for you. I'm 
Beast of all the Beast. Escorting us to hopefully the next predator. It's going to stop here. The Impala is somewhere ahead of us. Oh, no, there's something else going on here, guys. There's definitely something else going on here. Come on. Okay, I can see the Impala. I can see the Impala. That's good. When we see the Impala, then we see where the Impala is looking. Then we find the other predator. Hold on tight. This is going to be a little bit bumpy. sadly disappeared. It's still alarming. Now what's interesting is that recently it appears like some of the impala, the males, have been making rutting audio. And actually getting caught up with one another. in terms of the excitement they've been egging one another along. So I don't know if it's that. I don't know if it's a bit of hormonal vocalizations as opposed to alarm calling, but it just doesn't add up for them to still be acting like this. They would have, they shouldn't be running as they have. They should rather be looking where they last saw the predator. That would be more typical behavior of an impala that's not being hormonal, but rather being wise about possible alarm. Because Vima, you're also picking up what I'm putting down, doesn't? Yeah. They don't seem to be focused enough on a possible threat. They're like making the alarm call, but they're making the right sound. Yeah, they make, they're certainly making the right sound, but I think it's... I think it's just a hormonal thing. Possibly they've smelt the lion. You know, so they know there's a bit of a risk, but then... They've just got caught up in their own little affair there and they're having like an argument about where the lion's gone, possibly, as opposed to... There's the lion. We're alarm calling. We know what's going on. Uh, who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe something else did move through here, but we've had a quick look. Nothing at first glance, and their behavior doesn't make me confident that there is, in fact, another predator here. So let's stick with what we know and go back to that other big male. We're finally going to have got back there now, and he's going to have got up and moved. <laughs> Imagine that. No boy. What is full in your, what has filled up your belly? And who gave you that scar below your eye? Makes for great uh, defining characteristics on these animals. The more banged up they get, the easier, the easier they'll be to tell apart. That's one benefit. Even his legs, you can see, are full of little scratches. Maybe they've been t uh, having a few tussles with the two Matimba males further south of us, also possibly the Majingalan coalition, both of which are much older and established coalitions. They will be experienced, maybe not of as much youthful power, but certainly those two coalitions that I've just mentioned will have a lot of fighting experience over the Birmingham boys who are relatively inexperienced at being big and dominant. They've only come into this area recently. And you can even tell, I mean, his, his mane is not as big as it will be when he is at his prime. He's still on his way there. Oh, sorry if that offended you. 
I looked up, kind of saying, what if this is me in my prime? It's not going to get any better than this. Oh, interesting. So, Tommy Day, you believe that this could well be the line from last night. Thank you for letting us know your thoughts there. Let's check what's happening on the horizon there, Vim. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to capture that, but it looks like there's a thin sliver of orange revealing itself to us. Look at this. Good morning. Welcome to Africa. So thank you for letting us know that I didn't see any uh, images of that line that was seen last night. VM at first thought, uh, didn't think it was the same. Someone also had a wound on his belly. Okay, VM mentioned that the, the one from yesterday also uh, had a big wound on its belly, Tom. And while we were on the other side of the this boy, we didn't see that wound. Um, I think it could have possibly been that he was lying on the wrong side. So, I mean, it is possible. But we will reposition at some stage and get a closer look. It would kind of make sense to me that it could be him. The only reason I'm saying that is because of the movements and the area in which we found him coming from. It's possible that the, the lioness that the big male was moving with yesterday may have dragged him far to the west onto Sibambili or Arethusa. And once he had enough of that, he's now decided to head back to the area where they've been spending more time, which is, is south and east of us. So it's merely because he was with that one lady yesterday that would possibly have dragged him into this area. Okay, Gretchen in Illinois. Good idea. Let's put ourselves out of this misery and try and see if there is a wound on his belly. So we're just going to sneak around the other side of them. Pennsylvania for confirming that the individual from yesterday did, did have a gash on its belly. Now, which side of its belly is the question? You can see a large portion of belly here, and can't see any skull here. Can you remember where on the belly do you think we can be certain? Difficult to be certain, judging by VM's eyebrows that are raised at the moment <laughs> as he clearly or carefully investigates this individual. I can see, I did earlier see a slight little piece of or flash of red under his front right arm, but now I've lost that angle. So, I don't know, you guys let us know what you think. We can see a large portion of this very, very full belly, but no gash to be seen. It could, of course, be on the other side of his body that's currently visible to us. Wasn't well, it wonderful that we saw the prince left by those massive paws just moments before finding him? Come on, boy, one more call would be wonderful for us. Hello, Georgie. And you would like to know, how long does it take before... Oh, look at those eyes. 
So would you like to know how long does it take for the line to become unfilled? And I'm guessing by this time tomorrow morning, his belly will be kind of in line with his hips and his shoulders. And then another morning, there'll be a slight concave to it, slight indentation. And then by day three, he'll be looking hungry again. So 24 hours time, I think he'll look comfortable. Another 24, he will look slightly more hungry. And in three days time, it'll look like he needs another meal again. So they process the food quite quickly that they feed on. But as an average rule, I like to tell people from a full belly like this, and it could be fuller than this, he's not, he's not as uncomfortable as he could be. So that indicates to me that he possibly could have stolen something like an impala. There's that bl bloody underarm. Interesting. He possibly could have stolen something like an impala. Hmm. Interesting. Ah, uh, Brian, you've mentioned that he also could have stolen something, so we're on the same page there. Now, interestingly, I was thinking along the lines of leopard. Maybe stolen an impala or something from a leopard. Very easy for lion to overpower leopards. They're not going to put up a, an argument. But you are under the impression, or, or thought process rather, of the fact that he may have stolen from other lions, and that's why he's looking a little bit battle scarred. That certainly is possible. And if, for example, he had have bumped into the, the Inkahuma lioness on a kill that they've freshly made, he will fight them for it. They're not going to put up a huge fight against him. That would be unwise of them. But it certainly is possible that he would have delivered a few blows to get a hold of the impala size prey. And impala would fill his belly as we see it now. Or who knows, maybe they got a little portion of it. There were some young buffalo. Some of you may remember uh, seeing a small herd of buffalo yesterday evening just across on Arethusa. There was a young calf, a one-year-old calf and a mother. There could have been a few other females around, but maybe those buffalo came unstuck. Hello, Heidi, who is watching in Las Vegas. You would like to know if the animals ever get infections out here, just like our pets would. Um, wild animals are incredibly tough and resilient. I think a lot more tough in general than us or domesticated animals that have become more and more reliant on doctors and medication. They've, these wild animals have never had that luxury, and because of that, only the strongest and fittest genes get passed through to the next generation, and that kind of keeps them all in such fine form.